We bring you. Come on, come on. Pass the Troy. Are right, y'all ready? Yes. This sir. was rolling. That one's rolling. Yeah, we're good. Yo, welcome to the Solution Not Tip Podcast. Solutions <coughs> Not Tips Podcast. We've got Stan the Dog Man in here with us. And of course, I got your Marcus Best on the mic today. We're going to talk a little dog, talk a little life, and more life. Stan, welcome to the show, man. What up, man? I'm, I'm glad, glad to be here. here. Glad to be here. <laughs> Stan's one of the guys who helps us uh, train our dogs. I reached out to him like a year and some change ago now. Saw what he was doing. I liked his energy. And I said, yo, man, I come and uh, shoot a video for you, man. And uh, go ahead and tell them a little bit about that story, man. How it worked out for you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a unique experience because, I mean, a lot of people say they're going to do a lot of stuff. And then they come out with a, you know, a mediocre project or they don't fulfill the needs that they say that they were but it was different with you. you came out and we had basically a product before I got to the house and it was weird like I didn't have to wait hours and hours and days and weeks to get a, a 30 second clip yeah literally by the time I finished that training day you were home sent me three or four videos and I'm like hey what you think of this and I was like yes <laughs> yeah and the quality was there too though that's what fucked you up as well yeah it was everything was just you got angles that was just like, man, I didn't even know that could that could look like that on camera. Because, you know, you get in there, you weren't afraid to get really close. You you trusted us. We told you, yeah, you'll be good if you stay right here. And you stayed right there. And <laughs> yeah. the dogs did what they needed to do. Yeah, and, and mind you, people, I come from a dog space. And I've lived in uh, very unique environments, to say the least. So I know how to, I, I could kill a dog, to say the least, if I had to. <laughs> but but point is, is I trust myself. And like I said, I did trust Stan. Um, to be as close as I was in moving. I'm like, yo, your dog ain't gonna flip out if I'm like chasing it. He's like, no, it should be fine. And we learned and, and then we continued to practice and we was able to, again, get some shots that uh, before he hadn't, you know, people just kind of, I guess they were a little uh, leery, if you would, mm -hmm. about uh, getting that close with the camera. Mm -hmm. But the dog has been given a task and, and a quote I read or just a book I read years ago wasn't a quote, you know, Pitbull specifically, when you give it a task, even if you broke its legs, it would die before it would stop, uh, you know, completing that task. Yeah, I'd agree with that. <laughs> so, so, you know, I understand, again, a dog's nature and its drive, and then even more importantly, its connection to the owner. So Stan's a guy who has a dog that's trained at an elite level. And so when he said, hey, you're going to be good, so be it. You know, I'm like, bet, let's go. I'm, I'm with the shits. <laughs> so let's, let's get to it, man. So what's the hardest part about being a guy who trains dogs? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, the hardest part is just figuring out what everybody really wants. They'll say that they want one thing, but do they really want that? Do they really want to put in the work that it takes to get their dog to that high level? So having to figure out exactly what people want and giving them exactly that. I see. And what is it? So I would almost, you know, and Stan and I have been helping him with various businesses. And we talk quite a bit about different things, just like itself. So I would almost say, you know, as you study the breeds and stuff, one of the things that a woman you work with said that really stuck out to me was that a lot of times people get dogs and want them to do what they want to do. But the dog ain't designed that way, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so you got to think, well, you know, somebody comes and say, hey, I want my dog, well, your dog ain't that kind of dog. Yeah. It's just like, I mean, I want to be LeBron James and dunk on people and <laughs> do this, but I just don't have the physical build. No matter how many shots I shoot or no matter how many squats I do, I'm never going to be LeBron James. I just don't have that physical caliber. But I can be a bad motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like... You got to make sure that you're bringing the best out of the dog, what they can give you. And you can't expect it to be something that it's not. Exactly. Exactly. And that means, be, you know, he said this, uh, something we did a while ago, is having realistic expectations for your dog and yourself. Yeah. <laughs> because at the end of the day, just like LeBron and whoever else, you're as good as your ability to practice and do the work. Like, I mean, religiously, if you would. Yeah. It's got to be something you believe that has to be done. Like going to work Monday through Friday to feed yourself and your family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You cannot go and get somebody out of the bank that you don't put in. And it's not just going to happen overnight. It's a process. You got to build. You got to mess up. You got to find flaws. You got to make it sharper. And then you got to test it out. You got to put yourself in situations that you can't necessarily control the outcome and see what happens. And a lot of people, they don't do that. Oh, my dog does it at home, so that means they should be doing it everywhere. It's not how it works. you got to test them. you got to put them in those situations. And then you have to make sure you're communicating clearly to the dog what's expected. People say, oh, my dog knows sit. How do you know that your dog knows sit? Well, yeah. because when I say sit 12 times, he finally sits. <laughs> the dog just got tired of you saying sit. He was yeah. like, man, this shuts him up, so let me do that. 
Because if you can't get that dog to, if he's distracted in something and you're telling him sit, if you have to repeat it multiple times, does that dog know what you're expecting from him? Not at all. Not at all. So how many hours or how much time a day should a person spend working on what they call obedience and I call safety? Uh, I mean, I'm not going to say an hourly time. It's just going to be about a quality. So yeah. I don't do anything based on time. It's going to be what the dog's giving me. And you want the dog to end on a very high note. You want them to know that they're getting something out of it, they're having fun, and then most importantly, you want them to know when they're finished with that command. So it's not going to be robot, robot, robot. It's going to be the dog's working, the dog's working, the dog gets paid with something, whether it's a treat, whether it's a ball, even a belly rub. But they know that they're getting something out of it, and they know when it's completed. So I, I use the free command, or done, basically letting them know, hey, you're clocked out, go be a dog again. Go pee on stuff, go sleep go do whatever you want but if i call you you hear this whistle blow you're supposed to do something and they know exactly what lines are supposed to cross and what lines they can't so who's harder to train the dog or the people lots of people <laughs> <laughs> the, the dogs are born knowing how to do everything we want them to do i mean they know how to lay down they know how to stay they know how to walk they know how to down all of these things we have to make sure we're communicating clearly and not give mixed signals a lot of people you come off as an asshole sometimes when people are like, sit down. And it's like, well, what do you want the dog to do? Well, I want them to sit. Well, why did you tell them to sit down then? Like, mm -hmm. down means something else. <laughs> and they're like, oh, well, no, I mean, it's like, well, are you giving mixed signals to this dog? Yeah. A Lamborghini is a really great car, but if you put it in reverse and you're looking forward, you're going to fuck up. You're going to crash. And Absolutely. it's the same thing with these dogs. Yes, they're following what we want them to do but we still have to point them in the right direction we still have to make sure we're guiding them along the way hmm. that's a good way to put it so what you're saying is patience is key then on, on the owner side at least it has to be yeah because you can't get frustrated with the dog because again they don't speak english mm -hmm. they don't speak german they don't speak any language they yeah. speak in tones so we're saying words to this dog and they have to literally figure out what we expect them to do mm -hmm. like you can say cheese to a dog and have them sit because if you show them hey these tones mean this behavior, and then you get this reward. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand that it takes time for the dog to develop that uh, cognitive understanding of really what you expect. Well, so can then walk us through a little bit of the, the challenges with, and the dog community specific to the training side of these. Why is there so much hate? <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't give a shit about dog training to be clear. I do my own dogs and Stan helps us and, you know, somebody can call if they want to. They haven't, you know, hey, well, that's time. Let's just tell them to kiss my ass, to be clear. Um, oh, I, I but even Stan, you know, the other ex-dog Stan, he, he's gotten on TikTok and says dogs, I mean, he's like almost calling them out, if you would. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that this was, there, but that, that there was this much strife. In the community of dog training, like, why is there so much shit that goes on between two fucking trainers, man? The fuck? Because, I mean, somebody has to be wrong for somebody to be right. You know what I'm saying? No, you no, know, no. I don't agree with that. Yeah. But that's, I think that's the mindset that they have. Like, you have to suck for me to be a good trainer versus we can all be some bad trainers and get our dogs to do what we want them to do. And at the end of the day, the goal should be for everybody to have better dogs, for everybody's dogs to be safe. And I think that gets the egos get in the way and the the politics of everything. And you got to be this particular way or it's wrong. And it's like, well, if my dog's doing it and I did it this way, isn't it right? Because at the end of the day, we're working on a recall. If I got my dog to recall, isn't that what we're being graded on? But just because I didn't say Fuss or Platz or German or whatever, didn't do it your way, now I'm wrong? And you yeah, have let me to tell you what, there ain't no cool points in this game, people. Mm -hmm. Nah. Ain't no fucking cool points. Those things sound cool, but who gives a shit? Yeah. That's what I'd be confused about. Who gives a fucking shit, man? Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I'm talking to Stan today, man. I think it's good to put this as a moment in time to really deal with some of the issues. I believe in him personally. I've met some dog trainers and they're boring as fuck, <laughs> to say the least. They lack charisma. And the one thing I've sold and told him many times, as I even watched the other, you know, episodes, you was on Top Dog, right? Yeah. Top Dog USA, you've been invited to a, a few other places, but... It is something about this man's joy um, and love for his dogs that uh, <clears throat> speaks to me personally. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, that's the person that you can put in a place to do 10 mil. Yeah. 10 mil long term because people will want to watch that. And if those who pay attention, this dude really loves that dog shit. You know what I mean? Like fucking being on the ground, getting bit like the, the acting of it, the going through the motions. Sweet. So part of my challenge and, you know, and job mm -hmm. is, as an associate of his is to really show him how to highlight that skill, take it to the next level. Yeah. Um, and I think you've done a good job about that. Like you said, you just, you kind of pushed me in ways that I, 
I knew I should be going, but I wasn't sure about it. It was yeah. like I just would doubt it myself. Like, because when I would try, I'd get, you know, little man for a lack of better words. And it's like, well, maybe I'm not as good as I am. But mm. you you showcase that. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, like you said, you've been around a lot of other people. You've been in a lot of different spaces. And, I mean, you've, you've seen stuff. And you, we continue to do business yeah. to this day. And it's like, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't waste your time unless you saw some value in that. Yeah, that and kind of person. Yeah, and you know, Stan, other Stan X talk, he said the other day, just said, you know, you're a human enhancer. And I only see the value in people I believe have value. If I don't see nothing in you, I'm, I'm a silent as a motherfucking wall. Yeah. You yeah. sit next to, there's nothing I could, because there's no, I don't care how much technicalities, all this other, I know some very highly intelligent individuals. I'm talking about motherfuckers that know everything, but they suck char charismatically. And nobody will ever listen. Mm -hmm. Like I could, he, he could know every atom in the world, but if he got in front of people, nobody would want to hear what he had to say. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference, right? Yeah. There's a difference between being very good at what you know and what you do and then being scalable to the masses. And, you know, I do believe still that you have that capability, which is why I'm still pushing them to this day to just, hey, we got to tighten up the thing. I know how much noise is out there. I'm learning more about the noise level, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I just tune it out. So I, I don't, I don't necessarily know how to how to deal with it in that in that way because I just don't give a shit. That's yeah. to say the least. Um, and I think the other thing too, and talk a little bit yeah. about this. Uh, averagely and, and very commonly, people like the idea of being liked. I know you're a likable person, and I think early on, starting out, especially with where you started at, specific on the dog training side, you wanted to be liked a lot. Mm -hmm. And we worked through some of those things as well. Because being liked and being in business are two different things. Oh, very much. So. <laughs> <laughs> they, they they don't have they don't go hand in hand. I mean, I, and I thought they, they did because at the end of the day, you necessarily don't have to like the person that's training you to lift weights or training your dog. But if they're giving you what you expect, and at the end of the day, the product, the market's going to speak for itself. And you take your emotions out of it, you take your feelings out of it because. You don't have to like me, but if you want your dog to do certain things, this is how it's got to be. Yeah. And there's going to be no room for interpretation because that's the worst place. If having a miscommunication between people, it's even worse when it's between the dog. <laughs> <laughs> like what got me into dog training is I had a dog get hit by a car. Yeah. And he got out the front door, had no recall. I did what everybody thought you were supposed to do. You chased the dog. Hey, come here, come here, come here. And he's like, oh, shit, this is a lot of fun. And he kept going and kept going. And I kept chasing him and kept chasing him. And then we was in Louisiana and he met a truck. <laughs> and he's probably, you know, no farther than you are from me. And it's just like, fuck. Like, I literally couldn't do anything to keep my dog from getting ran over by a truck. And I never wanted that to happen again. So when I'm saying things the way that I am or when I do things and it's like look it has to be this way it's because that command can literally save your dog's life if yeah. my dog had a recall I'd still have it <laughs> yeah yeah and that, that truck only take one good hit people just so you know mm -hmm. and that is a terrible feeling in terms of being helpless very much so it was that's what it's like it's like I cannot help my dog I can't help myself right now and you're just praying for the best, and then boom, tragedy strikes. Yep. And you got to deal with that. Yep. <laughs> Going forward, it's like you come home, and the, the kid's like, where's the dog? And it's like, oh. Fuck, man. <laughs> I don't even know what to tell y'all, man. I don't know how to put this in the words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So recall, would you say that's one of the most important commands? It's, I think it's the most important command. Having to be able to call your dog back and letting them know that they're supposed to get to you. Because, again, it's just there's just so many opportunities, so many instances Somebody's afraid of dogs. They jump the wrong way. They get scratched. Now your dog has to go do a bite quarantine. If that happens twice, they put your dog down. But if your dog gets out the front door and you go, here, and they go, oh, shit, everybody's safe. Everybody's there. It's just so much more stuff you can do when you have a recall on your dog. Good, 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 good. So talk a little bit about the challenges of being a, uh, you know, we get into some personal stuff, me and Stan, but, and, and, you know, I know at times you've lacked some confidence. Where do you think that stems from? Oh, hmm. I don't know. I guess just never being, I guess, what people expect me to be. Like, I'm not, I don't fit in anybody's box. It's like, I don't do just this. I don't do this, this. And I've, I guess it comes from that because, like you said, I want to be accepted. You want to be liked. You want to be a part of the crowd and all that shit. But at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're one of the most, like, you're out there, but people don't aren't around you if that makes sense <laughs> oh yeah no you can't you can't you, it's hard to get to it seems like i'm around a lot of people but mm -hmm. really i be in my own head by myself minding mm -hmm. my business uh, like lil wayne got a quote he said real niggas fuck with me and i don't give a damn who does it and 
that's the mindset that I'm in now. Like, mm -hmm. all the right people, they fuck with me, they like me, they rock with what I do, it makes sense what they do. And the people that don't, it's like, why don't you? Like, please tell me a logical reason why you don't. And there's nothing that they can say. It's some he said, she said shit, or it's some shit that they saw and misinterpreted. But nobody ever comes to me and asks me shit. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you exactly where I stand from, because I don't have any negative intentions. I don't have any will, ill will toward anybody. I don't want to put anybody else down. So that's not me. So if you feel that way, you want to feel that way, honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that part right there. No, man, I mean, and I'm, you know, and I've seen you in action, bro. You know, we've worked together. You know, we've done some bite stuff and stuff. I can even, I put on the suit and... I mean, you're great at what you do, so that's why I'm kind of like trying to think through everything that you're saying as far as, you know, you want to be, you know, you want people to like you, but at the same time, it's like, why does it matter, bro? Because in terms of being the expectation, because the expectation from what I see now when you come out, man, that expectation, I mean, I know your dog is going to be, boom, Rocco is going to be on point every single time. So, you know, I'm just wondering why does it, you know, matter in terms of the expectation of others because you know what your expectation is at the end of the day. Because you're confident, like I said, when I see you in action, man, like it is literally, it's the most beautiful thing to watch in terms of a man with his dog. Because, I mean, when, like even the other day when I was in the bike suit and you did the recall and he's running at me and he even did a little twitch at me um, to get me to flinch and stuff like that. Um, it was in those moments where like, even though I could feel like that pressure, like, oh snap, like you might actually jump, but then you blow that whistle and boom, he turns right back around and comes straight to you. Mm -hmm. You know, so as far as that expectation, man, like, I don't know, I don't, that's what's hard for me to grasp because you're so great at what you do. Why does it matter what others think? So you have to, you have to really phrase the question correctly. Yeah. He just made a bunch of statements, right? <laughs> we're working, we're working with you, working. Hey, man, practice, man. Yeah, yeah. Practice. He's practicing. He get a little rambling, per se. <laughs> um, and he kind of already addressed it. He, being liked in something new, it's kind of like even in the housing thing that you started months yeah. ago. Is you want to get in and be like so you can get there to sit down at the table with these people. Yeah. Not knowing you could build the table and some of them can assist in educating you about the table. Now the smart thing Stan has done based on the things that I know because of him and I communicating mm -hmm. is he's went to places to learn more and they tried to sun him and put him down in ways or say you're not. They'll say So if there's a better way to do things, kind of like I work with you, I say, hey. Yeah. Why don't you try this, you know, mm -hmm. and then I'm right there to guide you through the next five steps. And most of the time, my way, my way works better. <laughs> <laughs> it just does. It's just the facts. But, <laughs> but at the same time, Stan was new to this space. Mm -hmm. He's never been a business owner before. Yeah. He's been an employee for 10 plus years. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been what? You, you, was, you trained for four or five years and really? still had a job. Yeah. Full-time job and yeah. trained on, on all time. Yeah, so so you, you think about what it takes and what goes into really stepping out on your own and into a state of faith mm -hmm. with no guidance. You know, and this is no disrespect to your family, but mm -hmm. I'd imagine they're not entrepreneurs. Nah, my dad was military, <laughs> you know, mom's military wife, and yeah. all those kind of things, but... You know, they did what they, they were they were brought up to do. Exactly. A different generation. And and so so he at the same time, like who he supposed to go and ask questions about mm -hmm. or two when when everybody else because the entrepreneur space, it can get tumultuous yeah. in a way where they don't want him to succeed because like he said, and I noticed too, they think that we can't all eat together. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta eat and say fuck you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you might about to get money my money, but at the end of the day you can only train so many dogs in a day. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. You can only do so much when you're one I can only shoot so many videos before twenty four hours is up. And then mm -hmm. I'd have even if I shot the twenty four hours straight, I didn't have to spend a day editing. Yeah. Yeah. You can only do so much work by yourself for yourself. And then mm -hmm. the more you do, the quality just goes down. So it's like yeah. you can do a hundred dogs, but then ninety five of them are gonna be trash. Like so why even do ninety five dogs when Somebody can do 30, this person can do 20, this person can do 10, like... Yeah. But it's all about the perspective and, like, the, the value that you have in your brand and your reputation. It's mm -hmm. it's more about money for me. Like, I want to do long-term shit. Like, I'm doing shit for my kids to look up and be like, hey, that's my dad. Like, yeah. you know, let them to be proud about something. Not just, well, my dad makes a lot of money training dogs, but, like, yeah. he's an asshole. He's a dick. Nobody mm -hmm. likes another... You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. It's mm -hmm. just bigger than that shit to me, personally. Yeah, your morale is in the right place, uh, especially when you start thinking about the things that make you who you are. Your fuel. So some of your fuel sources is your family so. I, I'm just guessing, and I mean, he could still answer the question, yeah. why you felt that way, but 
You know, it's a common thing that many people who don't truly believe in themselves yeah. <laughs> or come from the space where somebody tell you you can, mm -hmm. for them to feel that same way, like, man, what do I do? How do I, they, I saw a bad comment here. You know I don't read no comments. No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't give a shit what nobody thinks. Until one of them social medias take me down, mm -hmm. it's cool. I'm going to keep the same energy and keep moving forward and then keep building things that help us control our own identity and destiny. By taking them to places where we can really be free and how we're communicating and what to communicate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's days where Instagram's down. Mm -hmm. That should never be happening. If your business depends on Instagram, boy, you have a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> quick. Quick if Instagram down, but yeah. TikTok ain't went down. YouTube ain't mm -hmm. never went down. Mm -hmm. Fucking Facebook ain't never went down. Ain't the irony, but Instagram go down, everybody lose their goddamn mind. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. crazy. I remember that. I think that was a social experiment, personally. Yeah, probably yeah. see a mother like, uh huh, y'all need us, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be like, to come back right now, $2. $2 times 400 million. Yep. Because that's how many people plus are on that booger. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, I'll pay to make sure this never happens again. Might yeah. as well, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> so, what are some things you would encourage upcoming dog uh, trainers um, to, to, uh, to, to do, if you would, when starting their business? Oh, find your find your unique swag. Find your unique um, way that you're going to do things. You you can't be somebody else. People try to copy and emulate what other people do, and it's like you're only going to be as good as that person. So you're basically limiting yourself because now you're not them. So now you suck. So once you find, and this is just what I learned was I learned from the Danish military guys. His name is Jesper Anderson. He's real straight and narrow, hundred times a day. This this this, and his dog is amazing, right? But I'm just not that kind of person that yeah. I'm going to be that super formal. And whenever we would try to be like a formal trainer, Rocco would look at me and be like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Like, mm -hmm. like that's not right. So I'm just going to start messing up. And like Jamarcus was saying, when I have, like, the last couple of times we've been working, it's like, I'm, I'm me. I'm Rocco. Me and Rocco are working together. This is how we're going to do it. This is how I walk. This is how he walks. And when we're in that mindset, when we're doing us, I mean, I, I put my dogs up against anybody. Will we mm -hmm. win? Hey, we might, we might not, but I guarantee you, you're going to remember us at the end of the day. Like, a lot of people remember our top dog run, and we didn't get out of the second round. Mm -hmm. But people don't even remember who won that episode. And it's like, no, not a downside to anything that they did. It was just like, our round was impressive. And that's mm -hmm. what we're going to do. We're always going to be impressive at whatever we do, because we're going to have fun with it, and the dog's going to perform at a high level. There you go. Nice. There you go, there mm -hmm. you go. So basically, find your lane, stick to it. Find your language, even if you would, mm -hmm. and teach that and then build your brand and community up so people can be supportive of their dogs and you. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. Um, people are going to try to reach out all the time and correct you, tell you what's you know how to do things better or what's best. Um, it's okay to work with people, mm -hmm. but don't mm -hmm. let them stop you yes. from getting to where you want to be, man. What's the hardest dog you've ever trained? Mm. Uh, to be what? Obedience or? Obedient. So for one, and then go down to the bite stuff. So I guess the, the I don't I don't like huskies. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not, the huskies are not my favorite dogs, just because I mean you got to remember what they were bred for. They were bred to pull a sled and just continue to run. Yeah. They didn't have no recall. They didn't have no <laughs> down in. They just were supposed to run. So it's 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 just hard to work with dogs like that because you got to do a lot more to get them to want to listen to you because they're not a human oriented dog again. You put a harness on them, and they run for miles and miles and miles. So that's probably one of the hardest obedience dogs that I've ever had to work with. Um, bite work? I mean, the Mastiffs, like the defensive dogs, are going to be a little bit harder to start. But once they do it, I mean, they take it serious. And they're like, they're pretty savage. So yeah. it's, I mean, it just depends. I mean, I, I like a harder dog. I don't necessarily like a, an easy cookie cutter, like everybody's supposed to get this dog to do it because again at that point now we gotta have this dog uh going to the refrigerator and getting a beer to stand out you know what i mean yeah. it's just like there's just so much more that you got to do with the dog that's easy to get to do it because if you get a, a if a seven foot dude dunking on an eight foot basketball goal is not that impressive but if you get a four foot dude dunking on a, a 10 foot basketball goal you know what yeah. i mean it's just it's just a little bit more impressive when they're not supposed to do certain things yeah Mm -hmm. And how how important is it to be impressive, you think, in the space that you live in? I mean, you don't want to be boring. You don't want to not be impressive. So I yeah. think it's it's very important because people are going to want that. They want the flashy. They want the the high flying stuff. They you know they think they want these things. You know what I mean? But it's you got to be able to just show that hey, I can do this. I can produce this. Do you have a dog that can do it? Yeah, and we'll see. But it's it's like proof of concept. Yeah.
And you're just basically showing what the possibilities are. Mm-hmm. If you put in the work. And But I think, especially with social media, a lot of shit gets misconstrued that, well, it happens overnight. It happens overnight. Like, it's quick. It's a, it's an easy process. Fuck no. Like, I literally trade with three years every fucking night with Rocco with nobody watching, propping up my, my camera phone on uh, books and shit so I can record before anybody even knew who he was. But yeah. when we got that opportunity, whew, you better believe we yeah. rocked it out of the park. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like you got to prepare for it. And if you're not prepared for that opportunity, you're going to suck. Like, there's no, there's no in between. Yeah, 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 and I think that's what many people skip in life anyway, is trying to get to emulate the result, but not the work. Yeah. And it takes years and years of work. I mean, the average individual nowadays is kind of speeding up the process in which they could get to success if they just make a couple right moves. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, the average individual who's really thriving is between 35 and 40. Yeah. You know, that doesn't mean that there's not a millionaire that's 35 and under. Yeah. Um, or shit, some, some young crypto billionaires, if you would. Yeah. But that's just the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. And that's them probably doing hours and hours and hours of research, getting to a place to even put themselves in position to us to achieve that. Yeah. So it was, it's not, you know, when you get those certain levels, you're not guessing still. It's still a work and a practice of work over and over and over again. So that's good to te- keep in uh, you know consideration while these people are trying to figure out how do I get started. So you basically started this thing out of necessity because you lost a dog who meant something to you. Yep. And there's nothing worse than losing something you love on some what now is perceived as dumb shit. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's that's I just couldn't imagine that happening again. You know <laughs> yeah, I'm wow. You're like that's some dumb shit, boy. I just needed to recall. That's that's what it saved my dog life, motherfucker. Shit, <laughs> I got to stand on the front porch and whistle, like you know. What yeah, I'm exactly. Because that's where you're at today. Is a simple whistle. The dog knows to come down, come back to you, and sit and look up and tell you tell him something else. Stay there. Yep. That is so important, man. So uh, you was on Top Dog USA. Uh, how did that happen? Uh, social media. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, like I said, I would post videos. Nobody watched. Nobody did anything. But my dog's jumping over a six-foot fence. He's going through car windows. He's jumping on top of cars, going through the air, doing all of these things. That is impressive. So, when they were like, well, do you have videos of your dog? I'm like, hell yeah. So, video after video after video. And like you said, they probably saw the same thing. Like, we're having fun. We're enjoying this. Like, we're smiling. Like, we got a unique look. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it was proof of concept at that point. So they flew us out there. We did some interviews on Skype. They liked us. You know, we smiled, made people laugh. And I'm like, all right, come on out here, buddy. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, when we got there, it was just, it was just standing on that stage, man. It's just, you, you just play everything going through your head. It's like all the time, all of the hours, like now we're here, you know? Yeah. One of my favorite quotes is like, when the lights are on, it's time to perform. Like, yeah. growing up, playing sports, you know, Friday nights, uh, Saturday track meets, like, when the lights are on, it's time to go. Is this dude faster than you? Is he gonna stop you? Is he gonna score on you? Like, now it's time to put up a shove. You can talk all you want in pregame and, and leading up to the week, but what's gonna happen when the lights is on? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. And you guys did kill it, man. You know, one thing that I think is common as I've learned more about dog training is there are dog trainers who do the e collars, prone collars, and various things, right? Stan, I'm sure, you know, you use some of those tools at times, but it's not the only way in which your primary way in which you train a dog is through love. I mean, you know, there's a little bit of... <laughs> but, I mean, it's just, it's you spare the rod, you spoil the child. So I'm not yeah. saying that you beat your dog or anything, but there needs to be some type of negative consequence. Uh-huh. And e-collars, prong collars, slip chains, all of these stuffs are tools. And yeah. I always tell people, hey, it's just like teaching your kid how to ride a bike. They're going to ride with training wheels, right? Because you need to make sure they're going to do exactly right. They're going to be successful riding this bike. But if Jamarcus was to get out of his garage and pull out a bike with training wheels, like, we're going to be over there like, <laughs> he's still right. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, eventually you got to get away from this stuff. Because what if you don't have it that one day? That one time that you don't have your prong collar on the dog or whatever it is, like, is the dog going to listen or are they going to end up roadkill? You know, and it's just like, is it really worth it? Yeah. Yeah, so basically what you're saying is it's good starting, if especially if you're trying to get a dog to really conform. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you, you know, basically got to work them both ways, to say the least. Yeah, because you got to make the dog want to do it. Because yeah. again, they're, they're an animal at the end of the day. So if, mm-hmm. they, if they smell a bitch in the heat, they might want to go do something else. But if they know that down means down, or that recall means come back, I don't care if there's a bitch in heat. Because you may not see this train that you're about to cross over there try to get that, and now you get hit by a train. Yeah. So it's it's 
Yeah. <laughs> I see, I see, I see. And what would you say has done the most for you and your business? I know social media is a space that you kind of have thrived in for a little bit. I remember when you had 14,000 followers on uh, Tick and Talk. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you're over 100K now and you've done some things that, you know, what has that done for your business? I mean, you know, it sounds sound like a recording, but it's just proof of concept. Like, people can go and kind of see varieties. It's not just one dog doing multiple things. I got poodles. I got doodles. We got uh, chihuahuas. We got wiener dogs. We got a variety of stuff. So a lot of people can relate to that shit. Like you always tell me, hey, you need to get a dog that's relatable to more people. And having the social media where I do get to train, you know, golden doodles and like the little foo-foo dogs that people could see, oh, my dog can do that too. So I think it helps there, but I think the most important thing has been like word of mouth, like yeah. people actually telling me, this is the, the, the interaction that I had with Stan, this is what he did for my dog personally, and that's going to be more, because again, if somebody's looking online, you can have good reviews, you can have, you know, perfect videos, all the views, but are you really that in person, like what happens when the camera goes off? And I think I, I would like to say I'm the same person when I'm on social media and when I'm not on social media, I'm still the same person, you're going to get that. Very, very, very true people, and that's what I enjoy, and, and vice versa, you know, I think if I recorded a lot of our conversations, he would, and, you know, I do a little rants here and there where I go off, I say something crazy, but, you know, people like Stan have seen it live in action, or <laughs> been on the receiving end, so, so it is authentic, to say the least, in the same way, it's like, yo, you want to get something done, you might not like this guy, but he gonna get, he gonna do exactly what he said he gonna do, and the shit's going to work, mm -hmm. that's the bottom line, man. And like, and like we said, what was it last week? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, last week we met up and you asked me what about uh, something about men. And I said, men don't want to be wrong. And it's like, or men don't always want to be right. And you said it's not always about being right. It's about being better. Yeah. And you have to go through stuff to become better. You're yeah. not going to get every lift the first time you put it on the bar. You're no. not going to pass every test the very first time. But it's what happens after you fail. Are you going to tuck your tail and go run away? Are you going to figure out why you made the mistake and are you going to grow to be better to not let that happen again? Yeah, and, and you know, I think there's quite a few people, and we talked about this again. I, think, I don't know if that was okay or not, but the point is, is um, Stan and many men, uh, they live in that space where they can't be wrong. Especially when you have a family and all this stuff. And I'm like, look, <laughs> we got to get out of our own way, people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if anything, we need a fucking... A bunch of men to get together and be supportive of men and their growth, because in a, in in respect, I think because we don't do enough talking with each other, we're underdeveloped as as individuals sometimes, and we live in that you know we we call them machismo right, where we like ah um, or so you just won't even start it you're like hey I got something that's working bills are paid such and such when in his heart he might be like I want to take this dog thing to the next level. Um, but I don't want to fuck up. Mm -hmm. You go, well, you only going to figure it out through a few fuck ups, you know, and, and, and it's not really a fucking up. It's like you finding better ways to communicate, deal with people, deal with dogs, handle dogs, teach dogs, speak to dogs, all this stuff, right? Perspective mm -hmm. is everything. You only get perspective through trial and other error and putting yourself in positions to see how good you are. Or for that matter, see how much better you could be. Yeah, and like you said, it's all about perspective because the way that I'm viewing something in the high level that I have is not going to be what somebody else does. Yeah. So if I'm thinking, oh, I'm not going to post this video because it's not perfect or the dog should have been doing this, that video can add so much value to somebody else that I'm not even going to know because I'm not looking at it from their perspective. And yep. I've gotten that a whole lot. People have been like, bro, I learned so much from this video. I'm like, what the hell? I didn't even like that video. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's and that goes back to why I tell my people, fucking post it. Mm -hmm. Fucking, I don't care if that motherfucker get 100 views, post that shit. I literally am like, I'm posting everything. Because Chris said the same thing about breeding. When you become, and you breed breeding for years, you can get to, you know, this dog being an eight for you. Yeah. But it might be a five for somebody, but somebody else might be starting at the, like, I just need that. To add to my program, you know, so every dog, as he said, has some value, just like every experience has some value. And the more you experience, the more education you internally acquire to be better in real life. Yes. Experiences. Mm -hmm. It's just like those video games. Isn't it crazy how much when you got more experience, you got levels up or you did and whatever you're doing, it levels up and you get access to more tools, more guns, more weapons, more skills, the more experience you gain. But you've got to work to get there. Right. Yep.
The game's got to figure it out. <laughs> I mean, you put in the cheat codes, but you know. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, there's like, there's no real cheat codes in life. You've got to put in the time. You've got to put in the reps, and it, there's just no speeding it up. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you speed it up too fast, you'll be dead. Yeah, mm-hmm. You're gonna crash. I mean, and it's just not gonna be worth it. Again, it's a it's a marathon. Life's a very long game. You're you're gonna fail. You're gonna do this. But day by day, you can be better. If you, as long as you're better than you were yesterday, 365 days, you do that. You're a whole lot further than you were at this point last year. You know, mm-hmm. it's so funny. As a guy said, Trev, what should I do, man? I, I can go and run two or three miles, and then my, my ankle bothers me or it gets up. And I said, look, imagine this. You can get through a mile. I said, imagine you just did a mile every day. By the end of the year, you'd have 365 miles on your belly. He goes, wow. That's a different way to look at it. Because, <laughs> you know, he's like, I can go do two miles and be out for a day and then go back and do another two miles. But I'm good for a mile. Yep. Well, so we'll make that mile matter every day. I said at the end of the, the, the days, per se, in that year, there'll be 365 under your belt. Now, when's the last time you did that? Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. Mm-hmm. But the commitment and consistency on doing the one mile a day, it'll speak to your character and your follow-through and your finishing and so many other things as well. Mm-hmm. So let's focus on that. It's mm-hmm. the little things that make the big picture, and you got to get it right through practice. Yep. Yeah. And you gotta fail. I mean, it's funny you say that. Like uh, David Goggins, he has different challenges, right? Mm-hmm. So I did a hundred miles in a month. Uh-huh. I wanted to run a hundred miles, and it's like uh, I think it's like three and a half miles a day, right? Yeah. So if you only do three and a half miles a day, it's not too bad, right? You know, it's what's funny. That's crazy. I've been there too, man. Not at a hundred. I did about fifty-seven, and I didn't think nothing of it. Mm-hmm. But you go down in the first fifteen plus days or so. I did three, four, five one day, but I never always did two. And you're like. Miles and fucking fifteen days. That's kind of crazy. And you then you like it make a, three miles a day. It's a hundred miles in a month. Yep. <laughs> and it just goes back to if you miss that day, now you got to run four miles. And if you miss another <laughs> yeah. day, it's five. But it just becomes putting that commitment in you. You say you're gonna do something, just go do it. I mean, that's all it takes. Yeah. And you can break it down. Run run a mile and a half in the morning. Run a mile and a half in the evening. That's three. You know, it's there's ways to get around it, but like you said, you have to want to put in the work, and you've yeah. got to understand that it's putting it in practice. That's good. That's good. So, what does it mean to be um, iron sharp? Man, iron sharp's a lifestyle. You gotta you gotta be sharp. You gotta hold yourself to a different standard because you can't you can't help anybody if you're not helping yourself. Basically, yeah. that makes sense. That makes sense. So, what are some things that people you know get in terms of taking away from? That whole iron sharp experience. What do you hope that they leave with? Like, yo, I, I think clarity um, more than anything. Like understanding why the dog's doing what they're doing, yeah. and not only why they're understanding why they're doing it, why they.